us a big hand one more time. <laughs> glory, glory, glory to God. Have you welcomed someone to church this morning? Did you say welcome to someone? Tell the person you are welcome. Tell the person how is the weather? <laughs> what was the response? It's chilled, huh? Some of you that want to go to the abroad. You're already shaking in this kind of weather. There's minus 40 there. Oh. Are you aware? Do you like the weather? For those who want to go to the abroad. Praise the Lord. Anyway, we thank God for the weather. And we thank God that you are in church today. I want to share with you... Um, you know, uh, I already had something I was going to share. But as I... As we were praying in the zonal all night on Friday, um, as I was praying, the, it was as though the Spirit of God just impressed in my heart another consciousness. And so the message changed immediately. And that's what we have here today. But before then, you know, it is good for us to acknowledge what God does in our lives or does in our midst. Um, when we do that, it's, we are testifying to the fact that the Word of God is working. Praise the Lord. And so we had two, uh, I, ha I, I heard two testimonies that I, I, two people shared with me. And um, though they said it to me privately, or and, you know, sometimes people don't want to share things publicly. Uh, even, even if the information is public, <laughs> right? It's not like it's your... It's just something that God did for you, you know. Um, first was, uh, uh, Brother Obi, where's your wife? Is she in church? Okay, she, she, she shared with me about um, something we taught in Bible study. Uh, that was two weeks ago. You know, you know the, the month of May was declared as a month to focus on Christ for supernatural restoration of health. Do you remember? Good. So, so yeah, we were teaching about health, healing, and all of that. And so... She said one day, uh, you can, you can um, affirm to it because, she, you know, she said that um, she woke up and was feeling pain. I think it was a leg or somewhere, strange pain. And um, then she remembered the things that we talked about in Bible study. And, but that pain was quite severe, according to the story that you, ha you were very involved, you know, in trying to suit the pain. But she remembered those things that we taught and she put it to work and put it to work and that pain left her leg praise the lord praise the lord um the second one was um where is that uh, this this rain kept some people in the house today where is um destiny's mom is she here okay to so the last time we had communion our communion service you know after the communion, she came to me and said that she, she had been feeling a strange, you know, um, pain as well in her body. She had done everything to just get it out, but it wasn't going. So she prayed as we were taking, the before we took the communion that day, that let this be the end of this pain in her body, you know. And I recall that I saw her that day. The way, you know, the way you approach things show, shows how you believe in it. I saw that the way she approached this thing that day was different. And so after the communion, she walked up to me at the close of service to tell me that all of that sensation and all of that pain had left her body. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But yes, the word of God works. Today we are going to take communion again. It's not cream crackers and uh, ribena. It's the blood of Jesus and his flesh. I hear what I'm saying. Approach it with spiritual understanding. I see doors opening here today. Amen. Somebody say loud amen to that. Amen. That's right. And so those were two testimonies. Um, and of course, we also have the anointing. Sometimes I understand that it looks like the emphasis is on the communion. Uh, no, but there's also the anointing. You know, so as you take the bread, you drink the blood, you are anointed as well. And as that oil lands on your head, the Spirit of God will come upon you afresh. Praise the Lord. And you will be turned to another man for this month of June that will bear fruit, produce results that will bring glory to God. Somebody say loud amen to that. 
Greetings from our Pastor Reverend Tony um, and his dear wife. You can clap better, clap better, clap better. They went to refresh and recharge. You know, Daddy and Mommy went to refresh at a certain time. So uh, it's now Reverend Tony's turn to go and refresh. And after that, <laughs> Daddy, I just said it. You know, just to go and refresh. But they are going to come back full of fire and full of grace. Praise the Lord. They probably are watching now if they are weak. You know, amen. And I also want to just say a big thank you. Let's can we appreciate Daddy Sibo? Let's honor Daddy. Let's honor Daddy. What a privilege to always have Daddy, you know, there for us. Are you aware it's a privilege? It's a great privilege. Let's say we love you, sir. We love you, sir. Praise God. My time is already counting. But one of the things I, I used to know, I, the first thing I noticed about Daddy many years ago was that I, I used to see young people around him. And the place where I was coming from, I see young people running away from, from, from elderly people. So I saw this elderly person that young people like to come around. I said, this one is different. Praise the Lord. One more time, please give Daddy a big hand. <laughs> All right. I'm sharing with you today how you should not think and why. Somebody say, how you should not think and why. All right. And um, I'm going to give you a few a few thoughts that a Christian should not have and why a Christian should not have those thoughts. We are not playing church. We are not playing religion. Personally, me, I'm not playing. You know? And everything that I do, I know that Jesus is my focus and it's the reason. He's the motivation. He's the spring, you know, behind me or on my steps. And so there, there are thoughts that we should not have because these thoughts don't inspire faith. They create unbelief and they cheat you from receiving God's best. We'll share those thoughts one after the other, but let me begin with some introduction. First, let's go to Exodus chapter 19. I'll read from verse 4. Exodus. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. Exodus chapter 19. Good. In fact, maybe we should begin from verse. Um, see where to begin from. Verse three. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thou shalt say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is this not beautiful? It says, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. It's, it, is, it, is, it is beautiful to know that it was God who dealt with Pharaoh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No one I said to Moses, you shall hold your peace. It says, it says, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall what? You shall hold your peace. It says, the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them again no more. And that's God's word for somebody here today. It doesn't matter what it is that came you know, that had been around you, I'm saying to you today, the Egyptians that you saw yesterday, you shall see them again no more. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It says, it says, let's read on. It says, what that I did unto the Egyptians, and I bear you, wow, on eagles' wings. And how I bear you on eagles' wings. And brought you unto myself. Verse 5. Did I skip a verse? I followed, right? Good. Verse 5 now. Now therefore, now listen. God was saying unto, and don't forget, this was at Mount Sinai. They had just left Egypt, crossed into the wilderness, and then God was talking to them. He says, now you have seen what I just did to these people. How I've dealt with them, right? Okay. He says, now that you are here, he says, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my commandment, my covenant, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, what shall happen? Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above. Somebody say above. Say it one more time. It says ab <laughs> so um some people say above, some people, some people say above. I think Ghanaians like to say above. <laughs> right? But in any case, right, above or above. 
above all people for all the earth is what all the earth is mine glory to god look at verse six and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a what wow these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of israel god was saying to moses look at that verse five again he says you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people that means when you compare you can't you can't place out it will be such that you cannot be compared to others because you shall be peculiar and you shall be above all others there were other nations in the world he says but you you will be peculiar to me and you'll be above them when god favors a man he separates the man from the pack when god's blessings come on a man and you know god's blessings you know people say favor is not fair it doesn't matter how it has been it just makes it's as though it's as though you are the only one in the world he blesses the man as though there is nobody else and he has enough to go around i hear what i'm saying so he can bless you like it's only you and there's no one else and then he can bless you like there's no him like it's only you and there's no one else you remember the story of that prodigal son right the guy who stayed back at home you know he thought that his brother had finished all the inheritance he said about ah, father i've been here since i've been a good guy ah how come you kill the fatted calf for this guy you know what the father said to him? he says all that i have is in thy hand all that i have belongs to you glory to god god has enough blessing for everyone you cannot collect all from god such that there is no one left for me i hear what i'm saying you cannot finish it he that's why he's called god he's not a man god, some people deal with god as though god's, god has a bank account with maybe one of these banks around so the account balance is as is as he's withdrawing is going on so i give you one million now my balance is net of one million or less of one million so i gave you two million now it's good no see what he said to, the, said to moses again look at that verse 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 five it says above all the people what's the next thing he said for what all the earth is mine all the earth is mine the bible says a cattle upon the thousand hills belong to him he said the gold is mine the silver is mine everything belongs to him he is the owner of all praise the lord he says for all the earth is mine he says so you shall be a peculiar people unto me but there was a condition to it verse 6 and it says it says and you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which you shall speak unto the children of israel now if you look at this verse you will find that there was a condition in verse 5. look at verse 5 again the first line what does it say now therefore so he says if you will obey my voice this is who you will be if you will obey my voice this is who you will be so that means you being that person was conditional right it is conditional on whether or not you will obey my voice that's what he said to the children of israel now i found something in and, and you know we know these things a lot and we 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 understand this a lot of times we talk about it we sing about it we preach about it if you obey my voice you would you would you know be a peculiar people unto me we talk about these things a lot but i want to show you something that I, a lot of times we miss right now this same statement that was made to the children of israel right when god made the first covenant with israel there was a first covenant that he made he made this statement to them under the first covenant now let's see what he then said under the new covenant how many of you are aware that there is an old covenant and there is a new covenant have you ever raise your hand if you've ever heard anything like that that there is an old covenant in the bible and there's a new covenant raise your hand only daddy oh not many people know some just think everything is the same oh wow so that means that we need to teach on this again yes so the, so there is a old covenant and there is a new covenant right and that's why you have the old testament and then you also have the new testament praise god and the reason why one is called old one is called new is because there's a difference between the two 
and you've got to understand that difference if you want to work with God. Because you see, imagine that you were in business with somebody, right? For those of you who work in organizations, your organization has a contract with a vendor. And one of the things I find in those contracts is that the contract has validity period. So they can say, this contract shall be between Mr. A, Pastor Patrick Igbule, and Federal Government of Nigeria. <laughs> Pastor P likes that. <laughs> right? And it is valid from 2024 to 2026. So between those two years, everything that is said here is valid. The terms are listed. Number one, Pastor Patrick shall provide, shall supply the federal government of Nigeria, including to the president of Nigeria, 200 SUV vehicles. Well, it sounds like we're playing, Abi. We're not playing. <laughs> Number two. Number three, number four, they say everything. Now, if you go in 2027 or 2031 and say, I want to supply, what do you think will happen to you? you say, Sir, on what, on what grounds? On what grounds do you approach us? No more contracts, right? So if you want to supply, hallelujah, you want to supply in 2030, then that means that another contract has to be written. So that you can enjoy the privileges. And then one of the things I noticed is that in the first contrast, usually in this agreement, maybe as you were doing business, they found out that something usually went wrong. Okay, maybe the time of delivery was not clearly stated. Maybe you're supposed to supply within 30 days, but sometimes you supply within 40 days. So it's okay. In this new contract, because in the old one, we don't like this delay. So in this new one, we're going to include that you must supply within 30 days. So for both parties, it becomes a better contract, a better agreement. The Bible says that the old covenant was, was with faults. It says it was not without faults. That if it was faultless, then there would not, not have been a need for another one. So it was God himself who was initiating a contract between him and man. Praise the Lord. And one of the reasons that God does this is because God regulates his relationships. God doesn't have casual relationships. Is it that you are for him or you are not for him? Is it that you are cold or you are hot? You know, the Bible says that if you are lukewarm, it says I will spit you out. Is it that you are here or you are there? He regulates. And, and another, another very important truth about this. One of the reasons why God, you know, cuts covenants... Is because he uses it also to regulate himself. You know, God is all powerful. All powerful. So he uses it. You know, even someone sometimes says, okay, why? Let me let me ask, can God destroy the whole of Lagos right now? Can he destroy? Does he have the ability to destroy Lagos? Talk to me. Does he have the ability to destroy Nigeria? That just in one minute, all of us will just phew. do you agree? He has the ability, right? Yeah, because we see in scripture that there was a city called Sodom and Gomorrah. And an angel was sent to that city. And before you know it, the whole city was leveled. So he has the ability to do it. But with a covenant, he regulates himself. Regulates his love towards you. Regulates his presence, his, his relationship with you. Praise the Lord. That's one beautiful thing about this God that we serve. Right? And so there's, a, there's an old covenant and there is a new covenant. So let's see what he said under the new covenant. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Remember, keep Exodus chapter 19, verse 4 to 6 in mind. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Can we read together? Want to go? There are three people who are reading. Your voice, daily, I heard you, and, and others. <laughs> right? So let's read again. One more time. That's right. 
Yes. But ye are a chosen generation if you obey. Is that what he said? Is that what he said? Follow me carefully. But you are a chosen generation if you obey, a royal priesthood if you obey, a holy nation if you obey, a peculiar people if you obey, and if you obey me, you shall be you shall show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into what? Is that what he says here? What's the difference? Say that again. One had condition. The old had condition. What was the condition of the old? If you obey, the new one will go. Why is there no condition? Now, let me, let me, let me, let me explain something. Uh, brother, we come. Brother, we come. Let's appreciate this wonderful. This man loves God. His love for God is, is contagious. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes, we'll announce that. Uh, Pastor P, you're looking very wonderful too. Please, can you come? Let's give Pastor Patrick a big hand. All right. So let's see. Sometimes I try to be as clear as I can as the Holy Ghost gives me a graphic illustration. Pastor P, uh, let's assume that you are, you are the owner now. You're the big man because you look like the boss. Obi, because... I'm pastor, so I can't play the big So you play the small role. <laughs> All right, that's by that's the right way. So, Obi, you are owing me. You are owing me big time. The only way your debt will be cancelled is if you pay me. If you don't pay me, you will be my slave. Because that's what I mean, you're owing me. So you, you owe me for life, right? So, you, you must pay. If you don't pay, you stay debtor, right? Now, um, let's bring Pastor P in here. Um, Obi does not have what it takes. It is to pay. The only way Obi can be free is if either he pays. Now, listen to me now, right? Obi has to either pay. If he pays, then he's free. Yes or yes? Okay. Another way he can pay, uh, or another way he can be free, is if somebody pays for him. Yes or yes? So let's assume that Pastor Patrick will be owing $1 million. Pastor Patrick, my God, he just writes a check, $1 million. And he gives to me. And he says, honor the bearer. He <laughs> says, release the, <laughs> whatever he says, henceforth. I take that check from that day, Obi goes free. Yes or yes? yes? Okay. Another way that Obi can also be free is if me and I change my mind and say, uh, oh yeah, just go. <laughs> right? Yes. Sir. But you cannot just be free. <laughs> Something has to give. And because you are at the receiving end, you actually don't have a choice. You need help. Yeah. Right? Okay. So here's the point. The Bible says that if you obey me, you will be a peculiar treasure unto me. So in this case now, let's switch the scene to scene two. You are Jesus. Right? This guy cannot obey. The reason why, and one, reason why, uh, one reason why this guy cannot obey is because this guy doesn't have what it takes. That's the reason. It's like you are, you are you, the, guy, the guy is not even eating. I say, oh God, you're owing me one million. The guy will say, see, carry me. <laughs> Shake me. Do me like this. Carry, see me. See me. <laughs> Just carry me. Me say, I don't reach one million. <laughs> so you want to, right? He does not have what it takes. So because he does not have what it takes, he does some things to kind of, you know, just service my, my anger, to make me just calm down. That was what Israel did with the offering of sacrifices, right? To cover for their wrongs. They could not pay. So something to just assuage, you know, to atone for their wrongs. So, but pay now, you cannot pay. 
So what you are doing, you are just uh, up and down. You, you, at the end, you are still winning. Right? So, what does, what happens? I said, switch the scene. Jesus comes. Right? And then, Jesus, the Son of God, right? He comes, and you remember this guy could not obey. Jesus obeys on his behalf for me. I, 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 I'm waiting to see whether you really, some of you caught it. This will liberate you. I'm telling you, stay, please stay. One day I was posted to one of our uh, offices to work for like three months. And I was sharing the gospel with my colleagues then. And I had these two, when I finished talking with them, one of them looked at me. One of them had been a strong member of a church where they don't wear a ring, they don't wear this, you don't wear jeans, you don't wear, you know, many things where you don't do, you know, because you want to please God. And I'm not against any of those things, but I'm just saying that's what happened. The other guy grew up in an environment and in a very orthodox background, so he always thought that God is hard to please. When I was done that day, this guy got up from his seat. We were in the office, so it was break time. Hey! Hey, hey, the other guy, the bro that doesn't wear this thing, the guy say, ah, bro, you really helped me today. You, bro, you really helped me today. <laughs> Forgot our colleagues. He said, bro, you really, I say, yes. The gospel liberates you. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? And he does that by, you see, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing. When you hear the gospel, faith comes to you. What is faith? Confident assurance. You are assured inside. There's just an assurance that comes on you. Say, ah, ah. So back to the scene. Jesus obeyed. You could not obey. Jesus obeyed for you, and because he obeyed for you, you became free. Right now, but that's no way it ends. Because he obeyed for you, he didn't. If I let me show you this one in your Bible. Before I move to the next, I go to the next scripture. Um, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 18. We'll read two verses, 18 and 19. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Can we read together? I want to go. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all unto what? Unto what? justification right now this is very very important it sets a precedence for what jesus did it says by the offense of one right judgment came upon all every man became a debtor by the depth of one right it says judgment came upon all to condemnation so you man became guilty guilty as charged and he knows so he feels condemned he knows that's why that's why he, he because he knows he feels condemned, so he knows that he's guilty right but then he says even so hallelujah someone say even so someone say this even so is what people miss because you know what people are trying to do they're trying to pay by themselves that's what they're they miss the even so you are living under the old contract the contract has been reviewed. See? So even so, it says even so. You are not looking at the even so. You, are, you keep looking at yourself. Imagine, Pastor Patrick writes a check of $1 million for you. Right? Pastor Patrick, you turn around. He said in the name of Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's assume that he has gone. But you, you still come and you are, you are still, you know, trying to appease and assuade me like, Bro. Bro, I know. Just hold this one. This is a press. <laughs> you know, just, just hold this one first. Excuse me. Are you aware? Are, are you really aware? Are you aware? This is even so. Are you aware that this has happened? Are you, are, are, you, are you ignorant that this has happened? Are you really aware? If you are aware, what do you think you do going forward? Would you act like you used to act before? 
Something has to change. Everything changes the moment you become aware. Everything changes. The, the reason you are you don't is because you are not aware yet. You, the Bible says, For as many as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You are not aware yet. So the moment you become aware, every single thing, even the way you walk, will change. My brother, you don't walk like a you know, there are some things that this this th exactly thank you daddy you don't walk like a beggar you don't walk like a debtor again see there are some things that when you realize about the gospel even the little things about your life will change for example you know this might be funny but there are some things you will never see me do you won't see me on the road eating for example i'm walking down this road i eat biscuits and grammar you will not catch me do that kind of thing you know why I'm conscious of royalty. Have you, it, you know there are some things you don't see kings do. They don't, there are some things you, you can never catch them doing. You don't see, there's something, you know, I don't know how some people do it, but I just can't. I can't. Because this thing is not religion to me, it is reality. Praise the Lord. So this is what regulates me. So turn around and let's finish this. Go to the next verse. Verse 19. So I said I want to show you the obedience. Want to go? Read for me. One more time, read it out loud. How were many made righteous? How they were many made righteous? I'll say it again. How were many made righteous? So what did Jesus do for you? He obeyed for you. And there's another picture on top of that. You see, people say, okay, so are you not saying that since Jesus has obeyed for me, then I can go back to O again? You don't understand. It didn't stop there. Uh, go back to that verse 9. Uh, verse uh, 18. Let me show you something there. It says, Therefore, as by one, judgment came upon all. Unto what? What's this word? What is this one? They are not the same thing. Jesus was not just trying to just pay so that you will go. He paid and then he made you a man that should not owe again. That's what justification is. So you don't live with the guilt of I am I used to owe. I was, you know, Apostle Paul who, who, who did all sorts to Christians, persecuting them. You know, he said, he says, I've done all things in good conscience in my life. Eh? The apostle said, hey, you, if Stephen's wife. Stephen, who was there at that time, said, Hey, my husband, Uncle, <laughs> why are you not the one who said they should stone him? The guy said, I don't, because you know why? He knew that the guy who was that man had been crucified with Christ. Oh. He knew. The apostle knew it. So he said in Galatians 2, verse 20, he says, he says, It is no longer I that leave it. He says, the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So now you are living by the faith of this man. You are living by the obedience of this man. You are living by the knowledge of this man. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Not, not the obedience of yourself. The mistake people, you keep looking at yourself. The Bible says looking unto who? Why does it say looking unto yourself? It's because you have been looking unto yourself. That's why you have not been able to stop that thing. Because you keep looking at you. But when you set your gaze on him, it says looking onto. See, let me tell you. Oh, 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 four minutes more. Oh, my shoe. Oh, but I'll stop. I hope you record. Are we live? We are live. Of course, we are live. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I have not told you the things that we should not even think about. Oh, dear Lord God. But did you get the picture today? Somebody say, I'm justified. I'm justified. Say it one more time. Enough of all these weak Christians. Christians that when we say, let's, let's do one thing you are feeling, you just think, in fact, I say, thank God. Ha, thank you, Holy Ghost. One of the things that you should not think about, or one of the ways you should not think, don't think, now listen, don't think or stop thinking that God is holding condemnation against you. Some people just think that God is just holding something there's just something somewhere. Okay, 
did you do anything wrong today? Let's even be me there. See, not that I can remember. Okay, what's the problem? I just think <laughs> you are you are not alive with this present truth. That's what the Bible calls this pre the present truth. What has happened? You are not aware. See, it's not it's not aware. He, he's living as though. Can you move that way? He's living as though you are not here. He's not aware. Come for, come again. Sorry, this handsome pastor. <laughs> but now that he's here, is there a difference? There's difference. There's a difference. He wasn't here, but now that he's here, you live with the awareness that he's here. Glory to God. So you stop living, stop thinking that there is some God is just holding something against you. And you know, you are thinking like the guilty. And the one who thinks like the guilty will do guilty things. He keeps doing wrong because he thinks that he is wrong. He thinks that he's just, God is just, has condemned him. And so he thinks that he's wrong. That's number one that I say we should not think of. I think I will stop with that one. Because if I enter number two, I had like five or more things here. But <laughs> let me stop with that one. Have you learned something this morning? Yeah. I really don't want to go beyond the time. We can continue. Next. Thank you, Pastor Patrick. He has, he has said it. Jesus loves you. That's my word for you this morning. And let me tell you, nothing in this world can stop you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nothing in this world can stop you. Nothing. The Bible says one with God is a majority. They that know the Lord, their God shall be strong and they shall what? You see, we need to comfort ourselves of this truth. One of the things I want to start seeing really in our midst, a lot of times when people have challenges, you don't even know. I, sometimes I ask, I say, is there anybody, for example, in church that you can call and say, let's pray together? I ask that question. I found that many people don't. They don't. And I'm like, are we not supposed to encourage one another's faith? So when you hear these things I'm saying to you now, your faith is encouraged. You are stead in your spirit. Nothing can stop you. Say big amen to that. Amen. Now, if you have not... Thank you, sirs. Give them a big hand. If you have not known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are wasting your life. That's just simply what you're doing. You, you know what you're trying to do? You're trying to live by yourself. And as long as you try to live by yourself, you will get the result of yourself. But if you want God's result for you, then you've got to accept God's best, God's sacrifice on your behalf. Are you not tired? I'm talking to somebody this morning. Are you not tired? Every day, up and down, up and down, up and down. Your life is there like this. Like, no, it looks like there's no direction. Like this, like that, that. Are you not tired of that kind of life? When are you going to cast your body upon the Lord? It says, cast thy body upon the Lord. And it shall what? Sustain thee. That's what the Bible says. Cast thy body upon the Lord. Stand on your feet. And speak to him this morning. Now, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I just have 30 seconds. I want you to come forward. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'll give you 20 seconds. Come forward, and we're going to pray for you. And this will mark a new beginning in your life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, sapade kilebo shatabaladaba. Father, we thank you. We thank you. I want you to lift your voice. Uh, Obi, the strings. Uh, lift your voice. I just want you to. I just want you to just talk to the Lord. Just talk to Him with a loud voice. Just play on the strings for me. Just talk to the Lord with a loud voice. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. Oh, Rashen de bando sok te kila do shata ye de 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 bo shate ten do sati ba late kaba. Tell him you heard what you heard. You heard. You heard. You heard. You heard. Oh, Rabashata, he obeyed for you. Paro sekete zonte seto sota raso shonde kileboza. The Lord is calling someone here today, calling you to greater heights, calling you to deeper walk with Him. Oh, Shatamba lete kila brando sata le soto prate palando shuta bande kiledoza reke soto soto boza. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. 
Ay 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 bashan de brusa takalido salaba ele bushan de brusa takalida sote libalato ze soto o soto in de koshara brando sate brande kolorosa oh thank you lord jesus father we thank you thank you jesus blessed be your name in the name of jesus and father this was the command that you gave it says do this in remembrance of me we remember that jesus came into this world jesus paid the ultimate price for every man's freedom for every man's dominion as we take this bread as we break this bread and drink of this cup in the name of jesus i speak to everybody i speak to everybody that may be afflicted in this place i declare a perfect relief perfect deliverance perfect freedom from sickness from pain in the name of jesus christ and as we drink of this cup we proclaim the lord's death oh this blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. We proclaim the Lord's death in the name of Jesus. We announce that Jesus is Lord in house of praise. Jesus is Lord in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now as you take this cup, I want you to have a vision. I want you to have a vision of Jesus paying for you. He paid for you. See all of those things on Jesus as you take this cup. Thank you Lord Jesus. 